creating quality entertainment for the viewers. This is the solar panel, and this is how I'll be awkwardly walking today to charge the GoPro. <laughs> Amy's feeling a little bit tired today, sore legs, but we're going to, this is day three, but we're going to hit camp early today. The National Flower of Jordan. It's called a black iris, and it comes out of a bulb in the ground. But you can see there what it looks like. There's some more in here. National flag of Jordan. They're beautiful things. Such a beautiful velvet colour. Kind of quite solemn almost. GoPro currently charging. So you have to put up with this. But just amazing how much the scenery changes as you walk. So not only 20 minutes ago we were in like the mountains. Now it's just turned into like beautiful, luscious little sort of meadows just spotted with trees. It's just gorgeous. So peaceful as well. How did you miss that? <laughs> I walked straight past it. <laughs> Oh, he's picking his little head out. Hey, little guy. Mm. But I don't know if you can hear this, but this tree is just full of bees. The whole thing is humming. This is amazing. Nature. The best thing about hiking 20 kilometers a day is that you can basically eat whatever you want. So yeah, we've got Nutella, pancakes, crisps, bit of protein with the tuna. So good! Apple juice. Apple juice, it's the best thing ever, honestly. Yeah. And then this is the little spot. A town is up there. It's, you might be able to see it right in there. You could potentially hear it as well. So we are not camping at there at the towns anymore because the, we, we got kept up uh, all night last night by the dogs barking and then every morning at five in the morning call to prayer goes off and wakes us up at 5 a.m. So rather than following the normal course of the Jordan Trail which takes you from town to town we're gonna arrive at a town halfway through our day and then camp between the towns so we're doing a day but um, I'm not explaining this very yeah, well. Yeah we're doing like half of the trail I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. Either, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going to do half of day one to half of day two. Yeah. So it, it's in between towns and we can camp in places like this. Yeah. So rather than carry our lunch, we just are going to, is just going to eat our lunches just outside the towns. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we can eat our dinner at camp and then in the morning we'll be slightly lower on water, mm. but we'll still have a couple of liters each. And then we, drink that on the way into the next town. So that way we're kind of optimizing the amount of weight we're carrying, but also eating and hopefully sleeping. So yeah, that's an update. Might have just arrived at our camp spot for the night. It's unbelievably beautiful. It's just like tree, like forests all around. <laughs> so gorgeous. A little slice of heaven. So this is our camp spot for the night. We're just airing out our tent because we're having some issues. Uh, with condensation and you can see we've been carrying it around all day it's really wet in there and basically there's not enough ventilation it's only got those little bits at the top someone's used a fire here before so we'll reuse that so we don't scar the landscape got a food bag there some pepsi replace that glycogen probably i think that's the science 
And so yeah, it's pretty amazing. We can chill out by the fire, read our Kindles, and just chill. We did about, I think 18, 19K today, so I'll check. But it was, a lot of it was, um, but I'll check it. But yeah, a lot of it was uphill, so it's pretty inaccurate. But the trick has been to get up earlier. It's uh, 4.30 now. So yeah, I think we'll get up at like six, try and be off for seven. Uh, might even start getting up at half five, because got nothing else to do. Mm. And we go to bed at nine anyway, so why not? So yeah, I mean, again, it's just incredibly idyllic. Right. There's no one here. We're in a beautiful valley. It's just amazing. Very sort of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> which I might read tonight. <laughs> a few moments later. Slight complication. A lot of wild dogs howling. These hills must be full of wild dogs. Is that a problem, do you think? It's now half five. What? And we, I'm talking to the camera. It's oh. now half five. And we had to move our entire tent from there to there because we just saw a huge boulder roll down this hill. The ground was shaking. I, try, I think it was roughly the size of maybe so we've got two of these like these size there's more than one it was like three or four but the biggest two i think were around this size because obviously all these boulders have to come from somewhere so they come from up the mountain so we position the tent so that we now have all these giant boulders between us and uphill which should hopefully be enough i mean if it came, one of those came down and hit this it would stop it unless of course it like span it over the top <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would stop it because they were rolling on the ground. They weren't bouncing, were they? They were rolling, yeah. I think yeah. it's safer here, hopefully. And also, it should actually give us just a little bit more protection from the dogs. We're a bit worried about these dogs, like because they bite us through the through the tent. So what we've done is we put our bags under here against the inside of the tent, so that at least our feet, our faces and stuff, are protected. So they do come close to the tent. They're not actually like right next to us. I think we're good now. So we got our fire going. I'll let that die down and I'll use the coals to heat up the pot. Having quesadillas tonight. We've got beans, sweet um, corn, tomato puree, cheese, cheese, and flatbread, or pita bread. bread. It's the perfect little spot under the tree. Well, I, but under the tree, away from the tree, before everyone starts going. Oh, we're gonna set fire to the tree. It's nowhere near the tree. Oh baby. We've got a whole bag <laughs> yeah, it's so of much. bread here. <laughs> Not bad. Dinner by the fire. They're down there. They're up there. And then they're also over there. Sounds like there's a lot of them as well. We've noticed they go around in like packs of like four or five. Rabies is a thing in this country as well. We didn't get our rabies jabs because we didn't have time. They sound like they're getting a lot closer. Mm -hmm. It sounds bloody close now. I've well, spotted hyenas in uh, Jordan. They're the striped hyenas are the aggressive ones. They're in Africa. But there are spotted hyenas in the Middle East. <coughs> a little bit, a little bit daunting. <laughs> We've hung our food up quite high in the tree. I've left the fire like this. It's a little bit of firewood in it. And I'm hoping that that will just sort of deter them a little bit. For the next few hours whilst it just keeps smoking. I could put some green wood on it just to kind of make it smokier but the only piece I've got won't break in for an interesting night's sleep to be honest with you, I'm not aware. I think that was the line I hope that's the view in here <laughs> so just an update I have just seen three wolves walk across the top of this cliff and then down here 
They're not dogs. I thought they were just dogs, but they're 100% wolves. I think they're Arabian wolves. But I don't, my understanding is that wolves only eat small prey, like rodents and stuff like that. I'd love to be able to get it on camera, but, but they are just in this area here. It can't be more than 50 meters. And I saw three of them. I saw the first one came across the top here, and then two more. And one stopped there and just stared right at me for about 15 seconds. Amy was like, get in the tent, but I was like, I think it's best that they know we're here, we know, you know, we've seen them as well. So, we are surrounded by groups of walls by the looks of things. We want an adventure, that's what we got. That was one of the most traumatic nights of my life. The walls were close to the tent, like, so close that we could hear them growling, which was intense. We could hear them, like, going, yeah, like, I'm not going to make growling noises. <laughs> so they can't be more than, like, 10, 20 metres away. And what happened was we were just talking. I got I tried to press play record after it just immediately stopped, as is the way. Sorry, the battery died, I had to switch over. I don't know what I was saying now. Mm. It was terrifying. <laughs> it was actually a lot more terrifying than I thought it would be. I said to him as we were going to sleep, I was like, they are just basically dogs, like, chill. They're just a lot bigger than I thought they were, and a lot closer. And when they started, we were, sorry, that was what I was going to say. We were just, like, chatting. We were just chatting, and we were, like, talking about our next, like, leg. As we're speaking, just, like, normally, there's just this howl, isn't there? Just this such a loud howl. I can't believe how loud it was. It was a bit different to a howl. Yeah, it was a bit different to a howl. Mm. It, and it was like right next to our tent. And then the growling started. Um, so we just went to sleep, basically. And every few hours he'd wake up with them howling. And I text the guide. I got the sat phone out and I messaged him. But he didn't message back on like the satellite phone. Well, the satellite navigator, which also has two-way communication via text message. So then Amy put her phone on, and she just had enough signal to WhatsApp him. So she WhatsApped him, and he was like, oh, don't worry about it, they're coyotes. And I was like, we were like, we Googled it, and it was like, coyotes don't even come up for Jordan. <laughs> well, I th we think it was an Arab wolf. It was big. They look bigger than a Labrador. Much bigger. I'm still on edge that they're just like, we're going to get out of the tent this morning. It's going to be like 12, just sat on the floor. Your <laughs> search just said nocturnal. <laughs> and it said um, they, in the winter they can be nocturnal. But then another <laughs> article said they'll come out day and night. So, well, As long as we don't wear a little red hood as we go through the forest, <laughs> we should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I texted the guy and he was like, they're coyotes, don't worry. He's like, do you want me to come like get someone to come get you? And we're like, no, mate, we're good, we're good. We're just a bit... It was just a bit surprising, you know. There's just a lot of them, at least 12 of them. Mm. And then as we told you how, it would set them off in different areas. So like another group like on the on the western side would go off. And then there was definitely another group on the far eastern side. And I actually think there's even a group behind us. And yeah, he texted back, he's like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend camping in that area because yeah, you know, it's very loud. We're like, what? <laughs> We're here now. And then just to add to our woes, I've been sleeping with this open, that zipper, um, just to aerate it a bit more to stop this problem. Because look, if you go, up, you can see like, but just like, yeah, Amy's sleeping like soaking wet, and if that comes out on the camera, and look, you can see now just by flicking how much water's coming off. Um, I think it's just condensation from our breath. But like, I was just waking up in the middle of the night, and it was just like dripping on my face. It was so it's it quite. It's the coldest night we've had, so it's like freezing cold water dripping on your face. So yeah, just to add to the problems, everything is soaked and wet again. We nearly got eaten by wolves. My feet are in pieces. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> I preferred it when we were just stumbling in, around finding tortoises. <laughs> I actually think that we got a bit unlucky and we're just in this forest, it's wolfy. I think we'll be alright once we get into other areas. 
Um, plus, to be fair, they, just, they did just leave us alone. I think. I'm being the gentleman and not putting Amy on video in the morning. But, um, we we're just saying as well, like, we haven't had a single good night's sleep. We had one good night's sleep. Before we started, we stayed one night in a homestay. Even in, even at homestay, we woke up at five with the call. Yeah, I did. So we haven't actually had a good night's sleep at all uh, in like the last week. Um, something else to add. We just need one, one to make us feel better. It's hard. It's it's a weird like experience because on the one hand, it's really. But on the other hand, it's <clears throat> it's really interesting. It's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. <clears throat> and I mean interesting just like, you know, hearing these walls and stuff, like it was pretty cool. And just to add one more little detail of annoyance. This has popped. I kept kicking thistles and one of them went through my shoe, through my socks, two pairs of socks, and then through the bandages. I had to pick it out. And we reckon Amy sat down I put a bag down on a thistle and it's popped. So I had to use this as a pillow last night. Being the gentleman I am, when Amy told me, I swapped it over <coughs> and just gave her the, the my pillow. That's true love that is. Yeah. I don't want to be like, come to Jordan guys, because <laughs> it is good. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Once in a lifetime experience. Once. Yeah, once. <laughs> once. <laughs> Morning ritual. I need to keep cut my toenails just to keep them really short so they don't go black. It's just so hard to do this in the morning when you're cold and you haven't eaten, so you're not like functioning properly. Just trying to give that blister some kind of protection, and then we're putting two socks on the icebreaker under sock a woolly sock on top the idea being that there's no friction between your skin instead the friction takes place between the layers of socks so as the sock sort of rubs over that layer instead of rubbing on your skin that's the theory as far as I understand it Fun, fun, fun. All Aman said was, hello. <laughs> At 8.25 a.m. No, he got back to you via WhatsApp though, so we'll, we'll let him off the 12 hour response rate. Day four, on the march. And this is the forest to be clear between, is it Bait Idis? Yeah. And Rasoon. Yeah. I would say the most rural spot. Um, of the trek so far. So we've got the Garmin 66i, which is maps for navigation that you upload. I'll do a whole video on that because uh, it's a little bit tricky using the apps, but the Garmin itself is amazing. I've been using it non stop on expedition mode for four days, and the battery is like halfway, yeah. maybe even more. So I think it lasts a solid week. And it takes about as much charge as an iPhone. A lot of people ask if they can just get away with using their phone. And I definitely think you should just invest in a Garmin. Because yeah. if you use your phone, you're going to be worried about battery life because you're going to need to charge it every day. Yeah. And the trail markers are pretty good. Um, but you could easily like just miss one and end up going off course. And if your phone was dead, you, you would just get completely lost. Grant and I have two different SIM card brands. So he's with Zane and he had no reception out here and I was with Orange and I had one bar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's, down, there's one down there. There's one up here. Hmm. See this is, this is well. classic Jordan Trail. So we can see that there's... I'll adjust the camera. A way mark there. There's a way mark over there. And then there's also a way mark there. And then there's also one here telling us to go right. <laughs> and there's one there <laughs> telling us to go right on the tree. So. so that's when we pull out the GPS. <laughs> the GPS. Classic example of why you might need it. So, 
yeah, yeah. we can see it's this way. Because the, the way the arrow way. points is yeah. the way you're looking. So if I point this way, see, it says it's wrong. There you go, we know it's this way. And the GPS hasn't been wrong once. The way marks have. The way marks that they that put on the Jordan Trail. They've been wrong. They've been wrong a couple of times, like that one over there. I just wouldn't do it without a GPS. Yeah, I would just um, buy one of these. Yeah, and it's just another another form of SOS as well, and another form of communicating with people by a text message. It doesn't do t uh, calls, um, but it does do uh, text messages back and forth, which is all you need. Like last night in the tent, I just text that guy that we met in the homestay who's the farmer. You know, it's just, although he didn't get back to me, but there we go. He got back to me on WhatsApp, but such is life. And you can text any mobile number in the world on it. And it's just all part of your standard plan. I think we pay like 60 quid, something like that. Well, it's for the plan that we are on, which is the best plan that you can get. Yeah. Unlimited SMS, things like that. 99 Australian dollars. And then on top of the uh, Garmin, which has a really good SOS feature, uh, we have a PLB, a personal locator beacon. It's the same ones they put on life jackets, actually. The Garmin sends us uh, SOS to satellites to the Garmin headquarters, who then coordinate with local authorities in whichever country you're in, using the Iridium satellite network. It's one of the most effective SOS in the world. Um, <clears throat> but a PLB is not 100% necessary. If I was by myself, I'd probably carry one and I'd carry the Garmin, which has the SOS feature. But the, P but the I understand that, I hear that the uh, PLB is better like sending out a signal if you fall into like a canyon. Um, but also, Amy's got the PLB on her. So if we lose each other for whatever reason, um, you know, she can, she can call for us to us herself. And also with the PLB, the battery lasts until 2029. So oh, yeah. if for whatever reason, your phone's dead, your Garmin's dead, you've always got this backup and you know it's alive. Should we just show them the PLB? So she's got it in her front pocket, so she's got easy access to it in case she falls over and breaks a leg or I crack my head, whatever. And then you literally, the idea is you're meant to be no, able to do it one hand. Oh. Yeah, that's why it's in her left pocket so she can get it out with her right hand. I'm proving the science now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and then you literally just, you pull an antenna out here, it's like a tape antenna. You pull that out, you press the button, and that's it. I keep the Garmin here, so like I'll be doing this a lot. It's just, just enough so I can sort of like point it in the direction I need to, and then see where we need to go. And I, I can just let go of it and I don't have to touch it again, so I'm not getting it in and out of my pocket all the time. And I'm looking at it like every 10, 15 minutes, mm. just to make sure we're not going off course. And then the knife, who we was saying, has been really useful. I don't know if you can see that. You need to look at the law though. I looked at the law and I was just under, I can't remember what it was now. Something like 10 centimeter blade length. But, but we do use it literally every day like even yeah. with my top cutting off tags tags opening you, food you saw earlier with the tape with grand speed it's just incredibly useful to have it like right at your side easy to get to especially if there's a wolf attack yeah it, and it makes you just feel safer as well just yeah. knowing that you have something to protect you it's necessarily that we have to use it it's just <laughs> an extra like so in your case i have to leap forward and defend you yeah <laughs> But no, it's not, it's more, just, you know, it's, a, it's just, just like a visual thing, like a deterrent. So yeah, we'll do a full packing list a little bit later. Quick wash. This is on the hiking trail with clean waters. I've never felt fresher. It's amazing when you're living this kind of lifestyle, how some dodgy water coming out of a pipe with a filtration station next door that's probably cleaning it, makes you feel so clean.
Camp spot for the night. Look at that view. This is dinner for tonight. Burger cheese, slices, pasta, passata, not pasta sauce, just passata, and chopped up pieces of, these are actually chopped up pieces of like beef slices, because they don't do ham in this country because they're Islamic, so it's beef slices, but it tastes a bit like spam, more like dog food. But it's food, so it'll be good. These are the slightly low moments. <laughs> nah, it's good, it'll be fine. What does 25 Jordanian dollars, about 30 pounds, get you in Ajloon after you've been hiking for four days and on the fifth day you're a little bit tired? A bed cover with just a little bit of hopefully chocolate sauce on it. <laughs> this beautiful Rick Ross painting. Bob <laughs> and, Ross. Ross, sorry? Bob Ross, sorry. Bob Ross, an original. The decor where they've used the paint to create this, this wood effect, just this brown paint, is, is really quite... It, it, it just brings the room together in, in such a way. You've got a lovely place to sit here. A fridge that I was slightly afraid to open. But no, jokes aside, epic view of the ancient town of Ajloon and we'll go to the castle tomorrow morning. Oh man, it smells strong in here, Amy. Oof. I feel really gag a little bit. Oh. <laughs> the guy was saying that they've been struggling after COVID. The government looks after the south, he said. Petra and the Aqaba and they, um, yeah, they don't take too much notice of these guys in the north who are also part of the tourist industry. And you also get Amy <laughs> in matching decor. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anything you recommend? <laughs> no, uh, actually this uh, best uh, shower mine. Oh, okay. I take from this one. You know. Thank you. Hello. Salam, salam. I've not started. Amy's mm. tucking in already to her food. A there's shawarma? A, there's no light in here. You put the light on. There you go. <laughs> Look at that mess <laughs> of chips. I mean, it's cheesy chips. Cheesy chip. I mean, we need to eat calories, so this isn't the worst thing we could be eating. I think eating. this is like a chicken uh, with like a yogurty sort of sauce inside. Not tried it yet. Yeah, so that's what we managed to pick up. But actually getting some cooked food that we didn't have to make in a pot that doesn't taste like fire is a benefit. <laughs> it's good, yeah.